The Queen of Queens, the Sultan of SWAT, the New York treasure, Linda Cohn, joins us to talk Rangers, goaltending, being a badass, and much more. Plus, would Kaprizov missing out on the Calder be the most Minnesota of Minnesota things to happen? As always, all of that and more presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Better Edge, Jim Beam, and State Farm Insurance agent Tony Hoagland at champlininsurance.com. This is episode 78. Who is living that McGolden Light lake life? Check out sodastick.com for the perfect Minnesota summer collab. Plus, dollar bill cruelties, a restocked master's hat, and so much more, including your favorite Bardown Beauties merch. Use Bardown Beauties at checkout for free shipping on all purchases at sodastick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporate Claremont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. How's it going? How's everyone doing? Feeling good? It's, it's summertime. Summertime. Friday. Check, check. Summertime. Anything it, else? We get Linda Cohn on the podcast. Check. Big one. <laughs> Pretty amazing. I didn't realize she followed me and I've never felt so happy. <laughs> Twitter denied my verification this week, so I have an Damn issue Twitter. with Twitter. <laughs> but Linda Cohn follows me, and so that makes up for it, I think. I haven't even tried because I'm like, I know I'm going to get denied. It's going to hurt my feelings, so I'll just wait. <laughs> I truthfully was like a little blindsided that I got denied. I was like, seriously? Like, I feel like I've got a good following. Yes. I'm legit. Like, You've been doing on. this for like, a, yeah. you know, you've done it for enough years to where like it's legitimate. Yeah, it's, yeah. Stupid I don't Twitter. stand a chance. If you got denied, I don't stand a chance. So I'll just you have more followers my time. Than me. Thanks. Wow. Everyone problem. who follows Lexus, please come follow Jesse too. I'm kind of unfollow cool. me and go follow Jesse. <laughs> Help me get verified on Twitter and go follow the only person actually verified on Twitter. It's a lie. Yeah. It's a <laughs> sham. Everybody try to it get a <laughs> verification stolen and give it to somebody else. <laughs> I want it. Um, but we have actual things to talk about too. We will get to Linda Cohen. She will regal us in all of her career and just absolute amazingness. Um, I'm so, so excited to talk to her, catch up with her, but let's talk about some NHL awards. I know we did our one-off. If you guys haven't checked that out on YouTube, the Minnesota wild had four, uh, pe- members up. Dean Ebsen was up for Jack Adams. You've got Jared Spurgeon up for Lady Bing, Matt Dumba, finalist for the Masterton and Kirill Kaprizov up for rookie of the year, AKA the Calder. Um, two of those have been announced thus far. You have, uh, Rob Brindamore from Carolina earned the Jack Adams and Oscar Lindblom earned the Masterton, both mm-hmm. very deserving, both not really a surprise, Lexus. Yeah, I was for sure not surprised about the Master Tin. You and I talked about that in our one-off that like, we love Matt Dumbo, we love what he does, but this has got to go to Oscar Lindblom. So good to see that he got that. Um, I think the Jack Adams honestly could have gone to any three of them. So I wouldn't have really been surprised either way. Um, Dean fought, was the runner up there. Um, Which both, did surprise so- me. See, I thought Q would <laughs> really? be, Joe Quinville okay. would have been the second. That surprised me a little bit. Yeah. And it was, uh, so it was kind of interesting to see the breakdown of that, but but yeah, I'm not surprised the way that that one went either. Um, and I think those, we were kind of all in agreement that those were the two that we weren't really sold on that the wild could Mm -hmm. take home lady bang and Calder Calder for sure has got to go to the wild lady bang. I think Jared Spurgeon stands a strong chance to win that one. So we'll see uh, when those come out, uh, but yeah, halfway through, uh, for wild nominations here. I mean, I, I do actually need to issue a correction because this is my bad and I will always own up to my mistakes. Oh boy. Jacques Lemire actually did win the Jack Adams Award did back in 2003, he? which duh, of course he did. He's Jacques yeah, Lemire, right? That came out in the press release. And I believe during our one-off, we had said, oh, the only one, or the, we haven't won any of these, yada, yep. yada. That was inaccurate. So I apologize. Thank you for nobody calling us out on that. Yeah, but, shout out to y'all. Yeah, right? <laughs> Thanks Thank for you. That. you guys obviously didn't know either, so I don't yeah. feel super dumb. But, Idiots. Uh, yeah, whatever. But that was that. There is that. Uh, but again, not that Dean Evson had, had done that. So speaking of the Calder, which we believe is the <laughs> one that Minnesota Wild will take home with Kirill Kaprizov, would it be, as we said in our <laughs> intro, the most Minnesota of Minnesota things if Kirill Kaprizov did not win, considering <laughs> Anthony Edwards and Justin Jefferson, the two other rookie phenoms in the state yeah. of Minnesota this year on the pro sports level, also missed out on the rookie of the year. 
Um, yes, the answer is yes. If we get a clean sweep of snubs for rookie of the year this year, like think about how excited everybody has been this year. Like everyone is talking like for the first time in history, Minnesota has like really good rookies in every major sport. Like, oh my God, like how crazy. Yeah. And I think Justin Jefferson, you can argue that that wasn't like a complete snub. Well, a because, quarterback, right? Like, right. Like yeah. it's fair. Um, but the Anthony Edwards one, like LaMelo like missed like 20 games this season, I think something yeah. like that. And Anthony Edwards like had all these great stats and I don't know I don't get that one if Kaprizov does not win the caller though that's going to be like the the snub of all snubs and it's I unfathomable be, it really like, is I like I can't what I would be surprised but I also wouldn't be it's like disappointed but not surprised you know it's like okay yeah y'all really did that you you're gonna take that away from him okay I, I got I see you <laughs> give it to Dallas like you gave the hockey team away <laughs> whatever I guess cool like, bringing up a lot of trauma for Minnesota <laughs> hockey fans right now um but yeah I don't know I I really you look at it, it's like, there's no way they don't, they don't give this to him. Right. And then you really think about it and you're like, okay, but we're Minnesota and it's Kirill Kaprizov and Jason Robertson and yada, yada, yada. I mean, what if they give it to uh, Nijelkovic? I mean, how crazy would that? There's that too. I mean, yeah, we do always consider it's probably just Jason Robertson, but it might not be. <laughs> it I might guess. not be. <laughs> like it's nothing's guaranteed, but no. in my mind, it's been so guaranteed. So I just, I don't know. Now I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little, little heebie-jeebies. I, I, let's not talk about it anymore. I'm stressed out. I, I Again, that it. will not be announced until the cup finals at some point in time. So we yeah. have some time to still do about it, <laughs> do about it, right? And, and freak out and whatnot. I mean, I'm willing to bet that Kirill Kaprizov will get the Calder still. You know where I'm going to bet? I'm going to bet that on Better Edge. That's B-E-T-T-O-R edge dot com. Use code Buttes, B-E-A-U-T-S, for a free 10 bucks. Beat the Butte, guys. I'm on a redemption tour. Right now, I'm in first place after a very grim second place. Alexis, I know. Did you win in the uh, the second round there? Um, I did not. I took third, but I will say, Jesse, you're just like the Minnesota wild, miserable second. You're coming back in the third. It's, it's all par for the course. Like you're doing, you're, you're exactly the Minnesota wild. So go off, take home that, that trophy. I know <laughs> exactly. But again, shout out to better edge for the beat the butte competition and all of the fun stuff. They're working on even more really cool unveilings as far as social components. And they'll be out with us at some events coming up. So stay tuned for that. Again, that's better edge, B E T T O R edge.com. Be sure you check them out. Use code Buttes for that free 10 bucks. Um, final thing in our segment one, again, just a reminder, our off-season content, we're going to just reduce it a little bit. We're not going to force conversation. Stanley Cup playoffs are going on. Woohoo. Go Islanders in Montreal for those of you that, <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Woohoo. Um, but no, we'll, we're just going to focus on our guests this off-season. So hopefully you enjoy that. So again, Linda Cohen coming up. But in more exciting hockey news, it sounds like WD League will be returning this summer. Come July, uh, there is an official countdown on their website. So very, very exciting. I need to confirm with my sources, AKA Ben Hankinson and check <laughs> yeah, with him and make say, sure. Reveal the sources. <laughs> yeah. It's just Ben, good old Ben. Um, no, but that's going to be very exciting. I mean, Alexis, the world is healing. The world is coming back, right? Yes. So happy to see you. You texted Fred and I about that the other day. And like, I saw that I was like, thank God, because you know, the off season, it's sad because like, there's not like really major hockey going on. There's not even really major news going on. And it's just kind of like a sad time, right? Like we're enjoying summer, but we're like, man, it's something is missing. And that hockey is what's missing. But here in Minnesota, we have the beauty league, which keeps all of the hockey spirit alive in our hearts until the regular season starts back up again for, um, for hockey. So excited to see that. And hopefully some opportunities for us to get out there and uh, enjoy some of those games and bring you guys um, some of that coverage because man those games are fun if you've never been to one take this summer to go see one because it's like laid back fun event where you can watch like actually really talented hockey players play hockey and uh, it's really fun so yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to that I mean it's your NHLers like if, yes if Minnesota needs the reminder that we produce the best hockey the beauty league is it it's yeah. it's phenomenal I have been a staple there since the <laughs> beginning bugging these guys for off-season content so I know Hankinson loves to see <laughs> my face down in the tunnel about as much as those players do but it's a good time so yeah hopefully we can get something going there stay tuned for that and again we will confirm with Ben Ben I know you're listening because you've been a guest you're not a beaut <laughs> Please let us know. Please give us access. Yes. Everything that we need. Give the Buttes well. press passes, you cowards. Do it. Do it. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Linda Cohen. It might be the off season, but that doesn't mean you can't still shop Bard on Beauty's apparel. Get yourself a tank to add to your summer wardrobe or a Bard on Beauty sticker to slap on your water bottle to stay hydrated in the summer heat. Whatever you want, we've got it all at our Bard on Beauty's Teespring store. We're back. Joining us now, a name synonymous with SportsCenter, a glass ceiling breaker, trailblazer, 
and proof that not all goaltenders are actually weird. Uh, <laughs> Miss Linda Cohen. Linda, how are you? Great. Great to be with you, Jesse, Alexis, everybody, Fred, the whole gang. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. No, thank you again. I mean, you've done so much and I know I fawned all over you in the DMs when I asked you to, to come, but truly <laughs> looking back on your career, is it still kind of just seem like, oh, that was just a day in the life or have you been able to step back ever and recognize how much you've accomplished for women in sports and just people in sports in general? You know, it's funny. And uh, I have two grown children that are amazing. Uh, my daughter, who's just turned 30 and my son, Dan, who's 25 and my daughter's name is Sammy. And they have to remind me, and they've never been all caught up in it. Like I always sure. say, like in my Twitter profile, I've always put mom first because <laughs> that's what really matters to me. So anyway, they have to remind me and that, you know, mom, you're an icon, you're a legend, you know, all this. And I know that sounds like so like, oh, would you just say in that? But I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. I have like, you know, when I was a clue for a Jeopardy question a few weeks ago, I was like, I wait, that. what? Really? <laughs> they know who I am? You know, so those kind of things still come up. But, you know, there'll be a time when I really, you know, go all in and look back on that. But the, one of the most important you know, uh, things that I really appreciate and so good, like people like you, Jesse, and so many others that look up to me, grew up with me. Uh, and, and, and I had some kind of like little percentage to have to, have to do to, uh, you know, inspire. And that means so much to me at this point and even throughout my entire career. I didn't realize that when I was doing it because I'm still doing it for the love of the game and for the love of sports and, and all that. And why quit when you're having so much mm -hmm. fun? Um, but you know, that's something when I look back, that's going to be a big, big thing for me. Yeah. I mean, tell us a little bit about your childhood. I know I've obviously all the information that's out there about you, it's got involved in sports because of dad, which is so common. I think right. for so many girls and, um, really you got into this career because like so many of us, Alexis and I included, you just love sports. Why not get involved in this, uh, this crazy sports media world? Yeah. And it doesn't matter how you get there. Right. I mean, every, every uh, woman has a different journey and, you know, we're talking about women because, Hey, listen, it's, this is the <laughs> podcast that rocks. Okay? There are three women on this podcast <laughs> yeah. and Fred. So yes. Sorry, and Fred. I like that. Three women in a podcast and Fred. So this guy, okay. so that's funny. All right. It uh, could be a chapter of your book, you know, type of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, so, um, I actually wrote a book back in the day in 2008 called Conehead and no, no holds barred account of breaking into the boys club. And it, I, I took a funny look at my story. You know, I laughed at myself. But basically, I use sports to fill a, a tremendous void in my life. And, and, and that was really low self-esteem. And I know at this point, you know, a, a lot of people deal with that and all that. But even back in the day when I was growing up and a little girl, I turned to sports and I turned to music, not playing music because I sucked at the violin and I wanted to play the drums and my mother didn't let me. And then it's ironic that back in the day, my mother who didn't let me play the drums because it wasn't feminine, um, you know, somehow she just said, all right, you want to play hockey? I give up, you know, and she t took me back and forth to the rink. She was a great hockey mom, even though she worked full time as a, a, an RN, a registered nurse. Um, and my dad just, in, you know, he'd be there throwing out F-bombs. I mean, we grew up in New York and <laughs> Long Island and, you know, he'd watch his teams with such passion and highs and lows. It would ruin his day if they stunk. And I took that on. Like, it was unbelievable. You saw that lifestyle and you were like, that looks fun. I'll uh, have the same misery that he has. Exactly, Jess. I mean, it was crazy. It was like, but it, you know, it sounds nuts, but not to real diehard sports fans. Yeah. It gave you something to look forward to. And again, with a girl with self-esteem that I was, because I grew up wearing really thick glasses and just not feeling like I fit in anywhere. And, you know, sports and music, like, and music, you know, when I say music, it's not like I'm like love classical music, not that there's <laughs> anything wrong with that, but I love pop music, you know, just basic pop music. And their songs were usually depressing, you know, back in the seventies <laughs> and eighties, you know, I mean, just that's what I didn't, I didn't, you know, catered to the you know the love ballads you know i i went right to the break of songs the misery the heartache <laughs> and, and that, that made me realize hey i'm not alone you know yeah. this is uh, <laughs> this happens a lot but anyway sports filled the void and thank god i had amazing you know they're no longer with us but my amazing parents that really believed in me and said i could be whatever i wanted to be and you know interesting because you said you had a lack of confidence but then you thrust yourself into this world where you're very yeah. in the front, right? I mean, how much yeah. did that help you a little bit? And you had mentioned sports. I know 
confident women seem to be bred from playing sports for sure. But I mean, how much did that help your self-esteem or how did you deal with the days where it didn't, when somebody maybe did make a comment on your appearance or on being a woman or what have you that we all unfortunately have to face in this. Yeah. And yeah, I'd be crying. I seriously, (laughs) you know, I, I I took it to heart, you know, I, I was, you know, my skin as I got older and of course entered this career, I had to go thicker but it, my mother was amazing. I mean, I remember the early days of Sports Center, and you know, no social media back then. You know, I started back in the day in 1992, and a lot of people across the country never saw a woman giving them their sports. And even though I thought I did a great job, and obviously ESPN thought I did as well, <laughs> even in the early days, you know, they, they, I did. Get, it's not like I was sheltered from, um, you know, reaction or people haters. Because funny story, anyone at that time could have called up the ESPN switchboard and asked for Linda Cohn and the operator would put them right to my voicemail. So after, it's crazy. So after I did a show, oh, look, I got messages on my phone, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd hear like, really? Like three of the four were bad, just about, not about my work, mm-hmm. but just, oh my God, what were you wearing? Oh my God, your, your skirt was too short. And my teenage sons, this is dangerous to them. Really true story. Wow. One woman, a mother said regarding like the teenage sons, you know, you're, you don't see a lady should stand with her feet re- really close together, you know? And I'm like, you know, maybe it was like this far <laughs> apart. You know? right. And I, you know, like, oh my God, I'm sending, you know, subliminal messages to your children, <laughs> you know? So, but he really, at that time, you have to imagine that it was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? You know? And so I really had to wrap my head around that, but um, being a goalie, and I don't know, I just realized, even though a kid that was nearsighted, that was me, I had great <laughs> eye-hand coordination, and I, I, it turned out to be a really great strength, and getting back to your earlier point, like, being a goalie really got me tougher, and where I had to block out the noise, and so I think that I know it prepared me mm-hmm. for entering this boys' club, which is, you know, being in the sports world, and being in broadcasting, and working with guys, and, and all that, and laughing things off, and dealing with all that, and because remember, I chose, and this is what, you know, I know I'm not going off on different tangents, mm-hmm. but, you know, I'll never forget, you know, I, I can't complain. And I didn't complain back then. I chose to be in this profession. Mm-hmm. I chose this challenge to work with men and, you know, earn my keep. Yes, women have to do so much more than men, especially back then, to get the attention of others in a positive way. You know, not, you not only have to pronounce names right, get the score right, do everything right, uh, and no tri- answers to trivia questions, and do it blindfolded while doing handstands. You know, I but mean, keeping your feet don't. together too. So you're not <laughs> and you're keeping not your feet together, Jess, very important. So remember that, okay? So uh, even when no one can see you, keep those feet together. But it's really crazy. So it, look how far we've come. But uh, remember, when I speak to young women about this profession, and I speak to you two, and you guys know, I mean. Uh, you choose to be in this business mm-hmm. and you just, you know, rise above it. It's not right. There's still morons endlessly <laughs> within, among your Twitter mentions and my Twitter <laughs> mentions, but don't, as my daughter said, who's now 30, but she told me this 10 years ago or maybe eight years ago, she said, don't, you know, treat your great mentions the same as your bad mm-hmm. mentions, meaning they all don't mean a thing. Mm-hmm. They don't mean a thing, you know? Yeah. Well, but and you I know think- that already. You, you know <laughs> yeah. that. Alexis we try. That too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we're working on it. Um, you know, I think one of the interesting things about, um, you know, your, the, the path that you took and kind of being this trailblazer and doing some of these things for the first time is that you don't always have the role models to look after because you're right. the person that turned into the role model. Um, what kind of challenges did that create for you as someone who you're kind of figuring this out all on your own? Um, I, I'm sure it's a special feeling, but also created some challenges. What was that like for you? Yeah, you're right. I didn't have any female role models. I mean, I grew up a kid. I, my first sport that I really excelled in actually was tennis. So I grew up really idolizing Billie Jean King because <laughs> here was this woman that, you know, wore glasses, right? So you remember <laughs> I wore the glasses and the whole thing. And I had her, her tennis, rat, you know, like her kind of Billie Jean King, you know, signed. Yeah. To, not really signed, but you know what I mean. You buy it, <laughs> at, you know, at a place called Herman's Sporting Goods, which they had back in the day. It was sort of like Dick's Sporting Goods, but it was called Herman's Sporting Goods. And so, um, but my role models really, besides my parents who believed in me, were um, uh, men. Men that gave me a chance. 
men that believed in me that I knew what I was talking about in sports, uh, whether or my first job, whether it was, I'll just throw out names. I mean, that, you know, a couple of them are no longer with us. You know, a guy by the name of Al Meredith who gave me my first job in New York City. I was doing actually news updates for WCBS FM 101, which was an oldies music station, which <laughs> I work with giants in the field, DJs, <laughs> legends in New York City. So exciting, so great. And then, you know, that led to, you know, Ed Ingalls, who was the CBS sports director. This was before sports talk radio. This was in the 80s, okay, mid 80s. He gave me an amazing opportunity after I volunteered to cover New York Islander hockey games in the 80s, volunteered to get my first news director of my radio station, first job I ever got on Long Island. Great I time mean, to Ed cover the Islanders, by yeah, the way. Yeah, right? <laughs> right, right. But here's the thing. I grew up a Rangers fan, so it was very painful. It was very painful. I do this have to what, ask that. Yeah, how how yeah. did you grow up on Long Island and become such a Rangers fan? <laughs> yeah, my dad. You know, uh, my dad. Now, I, 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 here's something as little uh, inside. People think I've always been a Rangers fan, but that's not true. So I grew up on Long Island. So when the first hockey game I ever, I, the first hockey game I never, ever existed to me, I listened on the radio because back then they didn't really, I, they didn't get Islander games on, you know, it was a hometown team. So it was like 1974. So the Islanders had been around for a couple of years already. And I, the first hockey game I ever like, you know, was knew anything about, I heard on the radio and it was an Islander game. And I really liked them. I was like, oh, you know, people were crapping on them. They were not good. And my dad was rooting for the Rangers and they were good back then. And then, but I felt bad for the Islanders, you know? And then once in a while I would see them on, you know, on TV because they would play the Rangers and we got all the Ranger games. So long story short, um, I, then one day the Islanders were not in the playoffs. The Rangers were. My, I, wa I watched with my dad and I'm like, wow, not only is this team good, but it was really <laughs> exciting. You know, it was yeah. really exciting. And to see my dad just really into them, like I told you, the highs and lows. And back then in the 70s, except for 1979, when they went to the finals, they, and I was a kid, they, they, uh, they were really exciting. So mm -hmm. I just kind of, like my dad, uh, in fact, I liked all the teams my dad did, except for the Yankees. And I became a Met fan. So because, okay. and I'm glad I did, you know, just like a little bit, again, I felt bad, you know, they, were, they weren't as good. I had to find one team like that. You can come cheer for the Minnesota teams. They're never as yeah, good. Yeah, we as could them. use some help. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, but we're happy I here know. you're not a Yankees fan then. The Twins fans. Oh, just... yes. Yankees just beat them all the time. What's <laughs> up with that? You know, I always root to, for the team that's playing the Yankees. All Met <laughs> fans do. So, yeah, I, I hear your pain. No, that's too funny. What do you think about the Islanders right now? I mean, they're looking, I feel like they still don't get the respect that they deserve, but we're big fans. There's uh, three Minnesotans on that team. So naturally we yeah. get extra vested, but what do you think about the Islanders? And what do you think about the Rangers and the position that they're in this past? Season? Okay. Well, first the Islanders, you know, it's funny. I, I, I'm, I won't tell my brother, but you know, I think I told my sister, I, uh, I am rooting for the Islanders. You know, I've picked against them every series. So I, I tell Islander fans, I'm not going to stop now. I picked them against Tampa too. I said Tampa in seven. And, I, and they're like, oh, Linda, I thought you were, uh. and I'm like, listen, it's working so far. I mean, I picked, I picked Pittsburgh and I picked uh, Boston, you know? I, so why would I change? It's only going to help you. But, um, you know, I, I just felt at the time, as you guys know, when the regular season ended, they couldn't generate offense. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I was just like, they're not going anywhere. And then, of course, the magic that is and that fan base is incredible. I'm really hoping they can somehow put this together and find a way. And I'm rooting for them against Tampa, even though I picked Tampa in seven. As for the Rangers, um, I love Chris Drury. I love that the owner, James Dolan, who, you know, as we all know, really <laughs> is not, let's just say, locked into hockey and his <laughs> hockey team. Mm -hmm. um, trust Chris Drury with all the major decisions um, I love the hire of Gerard Gallant. I yes. love them in Vegas for the obvious reasons, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't, I, I thought it was unfortunate the way he was let go yeah. and he got the last laugh. And I think he is what the Rangers and this core group needs at this time. I also feel about the Rangers, they need to bring in, and you can make the same case for a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? Or even the Edmonton Oilers, right? Like teams, those two, obviously much more talented core group than the Rangers at this point. But I made this, uh, you know, I made this statement on um, when I fill in on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio that they need to bring in guys that have won before, you know, have that pedigree. We see with Vegas, hopefully it works out for them. They bring in an Alex Petrangelo. Mm -hmm. Already mm -hmm. that has made a difference, mm -hmm. I believe, 
you know, it's a little thing. Um, a guy like, you know, Patrick Maroon, who, you know, won a cup with St. Louis and then comes to Tampa, he wins the next year. And <laughs> mm -hmm. They're looking good again. Do you see what I'm saying? So I think the Rangers and Chris Jury, I don't have to tell him how to do it, <laughs> needs to do that, like needs to bring in the, so, and he's a winner himself. He's won everywhere he's been, you know, um, in his whole amazing career. So uh, I think he knows that, um, but I do love the coaching hire and I think they need to add um, some players uh, that have done it, won it, and, you know, that belief system in, on the ice and in the dressing room. And if they do that, I mean, they're going to take it to the next level. I do think with Gallant alone, even with this group right now, if nothing changes, they'll make the playoffs. Oh, for sure. I think you're right. I think there just needs to be a better balance. I think we saw Minnesota kind of inch there. That was a team that was yes. full of veterans and that's all yes. you had. And now they finally have some youth. And then Bill Guerin has made a very large emphasis on saying, Hey, we need guys like Nick Benino and Ian Cole mm -hmm. and that experience. So I think you are spot on. What do you think about the goaltending um, in, in New York as well? I got to ask the goalie expert, right? What, yeah, uh, what right. are your thoughts there for that position? Oh, they're, they're set there. I mean, uh, Igor Shesterkin is the real deal. He's great. He's uh, it, it, there's no problem. I don't know if they're going to hang on to Georgiev. I mean, I think it would be great. Uh, I love Georgiev as well. It was tough letting go to Hen Henrik Lundqvist, yeah. you know, yeah. face of the franchise, face of the franchise. And of course, what a face. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we're only human. Yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, but we wish him the best of health and recovery. And I really hope to see him back in the game, of course. But um, I think the goaltending we've been treating to, treated to in this postseason is incredible. I can't remember the last time we've had four amazing goalies in the final four like we do yeah. now, you know, from Marc-Andre Fleury. And what's not to love? I mean, he's so easy to root for. He's such a great human. I can't get enough of the flower. Um, you know, I, I, I just – he's just – he's unbelievable. Um, and I love the way he plays. I love his style. I love that he throws his body all over the place. He's not all about technique. He's old school like me, you know, yeah. that's how I would do it. I'm like, you know, diving for dear life, you know, like giving the puck away and then coming back in the net and making a save, you know, um, and, you know, and then you have Carrie Price who's just so cool and calm and, and he is so uh, just, you know, I love, I love the, that scene we all did. It went viral when he winked at Mark Stone. Yeah, after Rob good. Mark Stone. It's so amazing. <laughs> just like the great Patrick Waugh, the GOAT, the greatest yeah, of all yeah. time did way back when. And then, you know, of course, Varlamov is sensational. Varley has kept the Islanders in games. I think he's amazing. I think he's underrated. I think he should have been a Vezina Trophy finalist uh, for sure. And then, of course, yes, right now, as this moment, as I speak to you both, uh, Andre Vasilevsky is the best goalie in the National Hockey League. Uh, he's just, not only is he great tech, technique-wise, and he's big, and, you know, he follows the puck so great, doesn't let up a lot of rebounds, and if he does, they're in the corner. But the thing is, he, he is just money. He's clutch on those must-win games, right, mm -hmm. whether it's a deciding game or a game in the series like getting his team a two games to one lead <laughs> yeah. on the road that's when he looks the best that's when he's great he knows when it's crunch time and so right now I would say Vassie is definitely the best goalie in the NHL that's fair you know Linda I want to uh, turn the conversation a little bit here you talked about how in your Twitter bio you put mom first because that's what yeah. is most important to you. Jesse's a mom of two, very almost uh, three. Uh, nice. I'm only 25, but I want to have kids yes. someday. And uh, as we all know, there's this misconception with women, especially in jobs like this, that you can't do both. Um, you have done both and you take a lot of pride in having done both. Yeah. Uh, what was that like for you, especially, you know, early on when that was still kind of a wild concept that you could do both of those things? Yeah, I mean, I am you hit it on the head. That is my most amazing accomplishment in my life. You know, um, having, raising these two amazing children, but also having the balance in my life and able to do something I love as well. Uh, if I did not do it that way, sure, I'd be making more money. No question about it. You know, if I just put my, it's true. Loyalty does not pay ladies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I would have, uh, you know, because I didn't jump at other opportunities. I didn't do grass is always green. I'm not saying there was a, points in my mind thinking about it like feeling you know eh, it's not fair you know type mm -hmm. of feeling you know like that kind of we all feel it we all mm -hmm. you know kind of rethink our decisions and and we hope we made the right ones but looking back I know I did because my kids were able to be raised in one place have friends for life <laughs> um you know not moving around and also, you know, early on when I was married, I was married to someone who definitely was and still is a great father. 
And, you know, he took a step back uh, in his career because he knew my career was bigger. And so he was, he would work from home a lot in some key times. Now, are, the, are there things I regret? Yes, there was a point in my life, in my career, honestly, that I probably traveled more than I should have. I could have said no to that. You know, whether it's making appearances or celebrity golf events, Mm -hmm. you know, there were different things where I I wish I was home more, but I made, you know, I made that choice at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Oh, you know, I got caught up in it. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, I have to be seen. Like, you know, have people telling you, you know, like, you know, Linda, you really should be here. You really should be seen, you know, you know, back in the day, that's what it was about before all of this and Zoom (laughs) and everything like that and social media because people didn't see you pre-social media. You know, you had an actual, imagine that guys. You actually had to be an event. You had to be there, you know, your body. Yeah. And so I got caught up in that and that little, you know, fandom of that. Um, and, you know, if I could do that part over again, I wouldn't have gone away as much as I did. Um, maybe that had, to, had something to do with my marriage, you know, failing, but, you know, it was a great run. I was married a long time, um, you know, over 20 years. And so, raised two amazing kids, had two amazing kids. So I don't regret that either, but you can do it. Everyone can do it. But yeah, mom is first and foremost, uh, for sure. You're right. And Alexis, you're too young, but Jess, well done. <laughs> Thank you. And the only time I regret it is when I'm like pumping in between intermissions during the game yeah. because I'm oh. like, well, I have to do this. And I, yeah. This is what we're By doing. By the way, good for you because I remember doing that in the ESPN ladies club many, <laughs> right? many, many, many times. And you're like, oh God, but it's what am to, I it, doing? It, I know. it hurts if you it, don't. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, or God forbid I go into the locker room and there's any leaking or showing, right? Oh, I'd be like, God. oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. And it's the guys that would get more uncomfortable. I'm sure they'd be like, what's going on yeah, here? They're <laughs> like, I know. Especially the young ones who have no clue what's going yes. on, you know? Which is where it's been nice that the Wild have the older players because most of them are dads. So <laughs> exactly. they always really understood. Now that And make a joke shifting. about it. Yeah. yeah. Make a joke about it. Like say to them, I mean, like, you know, I know you go hard into the boards, but can you breastfeed in between periods like I do? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's too funny. And I think that's a great reminder because I think right now, especially where I'm at in my career, sometimes I do probably put my career first a little bit yeah. more than I would like to. I mean, the kids are four and two and then like Alexis mentioned there's a third on the way and it's funny though because they're still a little young and they're trying to figure out what mommy does right (laughs) Right. like I know my my oldest lately has been putting on um beads or shoes and he says I'm going to hockey because that's what he sees mommy do so I mean it's definitely fun but I do I think that's something that I'm learning to embrace more is say no to some of those outside things and say yes yes to the kiddos right and (laughs) you know combine it both they love hockey so we're very fortunate or unfortunate (laughs) depending on how you look at it financially (laughs) um but you know it's certainly uh, a lot of fun I mean do you see it's, it's becoming obviously more and more women are involved in this industry, which is tremendous. But do you, you know, see that as a hurdle, you know, where women still probably feel the need to choose between having a family or getting in sports? Because like you said, depending on the position that you hold, it can be a lot of travel. It can be a lot of away time. And I remember telling my husband when we started dating, Hey, I have this dream. You're second. My dream is first. So (laughs) you can make that decision. I mean, do you think that still is a large challenge for, for women and why maybe there's less in the, in the work, work industry here? Yeah. You know, Jess, it's a great question because this is kind of the stuff that I went through leaving home, leaving my husband at the time, you know, he knew, he was very understanding, but, you know, did it help a marriage at that point? Not to get heavy and everyone's different, but, yeah. you know, it didn't, I got caught up in all that, you know, mm-hmm. I got caught up in it. Um, and, uh, but wi- women should think like men do. I mean, I'm not saying ignore the children, but, <laughs> you know, men always put their career first, you know, they'll say the right things, but if it's a <laughs> career that they've dreamed about and love, they, they expect the family to work around them. I don't yes. think that's changed all too much. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's changed a bit, which is great. A lot of more understanding men out there and see that, you know, women um, are getting more opportunities. And so I hope those opportunities continue, but it, it is still tougher for a woman because there's something about being a mom where being away from your kids, it's really tough. And even if there are attractive fruit to grab you know, out there, you know, it's tough to say no and not realize this is really going to hurt my career. I don't think most men think, oh, if I turn this down, this is really going to hurt my career, you know, type of thing. So 
I think we're still feeling it out and you really have to go with your gut in making these decisions and make it a family matter and talk about it and say, huh, do I really need to go here? Okay. Yeah, I do. Maybe I don't go as long. Maybe I don't do, you know, whatever it is, or let's make it work out. You know, as long as I always say this, as long as the kids are with a, a parent, you know, and it's, you know, then you're okay. You know, but if they're with, you know, childcare and daycare more than one of one of the parents in the family unit, then that you have to rethink and reorganize. No, oh, that's fair. I didn't, you had mentioned the kids like to remind you that you're an icon, right? But when did they maybe start to realize like, oh, mom's kind of like a big deal or, you know, or <laughs> were there any moments that they, they particularly probably look back on like, oh, I got to meet so-and-so and that was pretty tremendous or anything like that. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, my daughter, again, who's uh, four and a half years older than my son, yeah. but it must've been when she was like eight, you know, and her friends started recognizing me, you know, and she didn't even know why it was really kind of funny. But you know, what's really interesting is staying with my daughter for a second, and I'll get into my son. When she hit high school, I mean, she was always uh, overachiever. She's smart, you know, popular, um, just amazing. And so she in high school, she specifically, and, and what helped her was that, you know, I, um, my, my, my maiden name is the Nick Cone, you know, so I just kept that, you know, mm -hmm. and so her last name was the married name. It was, you know, Kaufman. Sure. So that helped because she did not want people <laughs> to know that she was my daughter, not because she wasn't <laughs> proud of me, but she didn't want to have fake friends, Yeah, you know? And it, for a while I was like, when I realized this and she's like, mom, it's not because I'm not proud of you. Cause first <laughs> I was like, aren't you proud of me? You know, like, yeah. don't you want people to know I'm your mother, that this woman independent, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. she said, of course she goes, but there are a lot of fakers out there, you know, yeah. that kind of yeah. thing. And so with my son, my son grew up a big NFL fan. He still is. He's trying to get work in the NFL. <laughs> um, he's 25. He's your age. But, um, and he, um, but anyway, he, uh, he, you know, I would, they used to have a thing called ESPN the weekend, which was mm -hmm. in Orlando at Disney World, really fun. So a few times I was able to take Dan and Sammy, but uh, Dan there, and Dan got to meet like a lot of like, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. all these great players, you know, Larry Fitzgerald, I remember was so great. Chad Johnson, when he used to play was amazing. All these kind of things with Dan, you know, and it was so cute to see him so happy. So yeah, that was definitely a benefit. And that's when they realized um, that their mother you know, uh, is recognizable. Yeah, right. <laughs> and people look up to her. You know? So that was kind of cool. But, finally, uh, there's like finally, a little like, this yeah, is why whatever. we did this kids. Right? <laughs> that, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. I think the sacrifice was worth it. You didn't see mom as much in the, you know, those middle years, but yeah. I think it turned out okay. And by the way, they're fine. Everything's great. So like, mom, you had to do that. And they're very independent, which I really like. And I think, well, mm -hmm. you know, to Jesse's point, you know, not to worry, because I think you just make your kids more independent and not needy on you mm -hmm. type of thing that you're always there. Kind of like the way I'm there for my dog now, because <laughs> I've been with my dog who's, who's amazing Babs yeah, and she depends on me. I'm always here in the apartment most of the time. And I worry because now I worry when I'm out. Oh my God, I need to get the dog sitter because she'll be lonely. You know, so it's so crazy. The amount of dogs that are going to be facing anxiety when everyone goes back to work, I do feel yeah. for them. Like, I yeah, it's going to be a big change for some. Yeah, of those poor dogs and these people, no offense to them, and they know who they are <laughs> during the pandemic, said, mm, I'm lonely. I want to get a dog. Yeah. And then they're back at work and they're like, those poor dogs. And I didn't realize it was so expensive. Why didn't yeah. you? Yeah, you know, right. it's so silly. It's a child. It's another child. <laughs> exactly. <Sorry>. It is. <laughs> well, we actually had put out on our Twitter um, some ask for questions from fans. And oh, nice. No surprising outpouring of love for Linda. <laughs> People were very, so very great. excited That's to so see. Nice. So we wanted to read some of the comments and then some of the questions from our fans as well. So to kick things off, Dana wanted to say, Linda is the absolute greatest. I got to meet her at a golf tournament in middle school. She was so sweet to me and signed my sports center t-shirt. I cannot <laughs> wait to listen. We had a guy named Roy who said, I don't have a question, but if you could just let her know that I think she's awesome, that would be cool. Back when nice. I was in college at the U and the Gophers made their run in 1997, I made a sign that said, Linda Cohen, will you be my Valentine? Oh totally my God, made sports I center I that, that night. Do you really? Yes. There you go, no, Roy. I she remembers. I hope he's listening. Roy, I, I remember that because, you know, 
my colleagues were teasing me about it. <laughs> but at that time, you know, five years into the job, and remember I talked about like not knowing if everyone loves me and it was really new, you know, yeah. to this old concept of a woman doing national sports. And that was just so cool. And so, yes, I love that. Thank uh, you. Yes. And Tyler said, no cues. I just want Linda to know that I've been a fan for years. My earliest hockey memories are watching her and the rest of the ESPN NHL tonight on the deuce. The fact yes. she's had a successful career this long speaks volumes to her as a worker and a fan of the game nice and thank you finally the beard i we don't know his name but he's, great. <laughs> not, he's james, not james harden, not james harden. <laughs> yeah, they, you know that could be it that's probably his, yeah, his burner account it. i think yeah uh, she's what made espn espn a person passionate and knowledgeable about sports while he's simultaneously entertaining the viewer so we that's obviously awesome. echo those sentiments yeah. and then some of the questions that we had um one gentleman dan schultz wanted to know um how you handled the early part of your career being a lead woman in hockey in particular. Yeah. Um, his intent of the question is how you handled being labeled in the context of woman instead of leading hockey reporter anchor voice and not just that generic. So how did you handle some of that? Yeah, sadly, back in the day, you just accepted it. I mean, it really, I mean, it's, I know people, the young people like yourselves, you know, it's hard to even fathom, but <laughs> you know, you were just happy you were on the air. Yeah. Uh, I still am not, I was, but totally frank, which is I've been throughout this uh, interview, uh, and that's what I usually gets me in trouble because you know. <laughs> but I guess that's a, a good trait to be that yeah. way. But um, you know, I wasn't happy where I didn't get, I didn't, I didn't that I didn't get the assignments to go to the Stanley Cup Finals, and the same people always went. I was not happy with that. Yeah. I think I deserved to do it, and for things that were not in my control, I couldn't change it. So if I have a regret about that run and then in a situation where I could not change and how do I deal with it? I wasn't happy. I just had to deal with it. I was just staying in the studio and then I had to remember, you know, there were worse problems, of course, but I just felt I belonged at the rink um, uh, doing what I do. Um, I hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, that uh, stuff like that changes now that uh, ESPN has hockey again yeah. um, coming up in October. But, um, you know, back then when we did have hockey, you know, yes, I was on Sports Center, so I got to show my knowledge through that. And that's how I turned it into a positive. No, I couldn't be at the rink for some reason, unknown mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. But at least I just showed off my knowledge where I could, the stage that was given to me. And I don't regret that. But I do, if I had to go back in time, I, I just don't understand. But that's the challenges <laughs> that women like me and others faced, not getting the role that they deserved um, or an opportunity to prove they deserved it, didn't even get an opportunity uh, that way. So, you know, that's just part of the gig, but, you know, I'm not bitter about it, but, you know, that's just the thing where hopefully we're all changing and we're moving up when it comes to giving women the opportunity to shine. Right. Well, uh, Nick Berg uh, has a question about the, the way that you kind of present yourself on TV. He said, does she feel she was way ahead of the game with her voice? Having heard and watched many women who do sports, sometimes their voices make them seem disinterested or bored in the game, but never with Linda. So talking about your passion combined uh, with your actual presence on TV, did you feel like you had an advantage there because you truly did care about sports? You were a sports fan. Oh, that is so cool of a question because... <laughs> I think it comes out in your voice, you know, that you're a genuine fan. I always, uh, as I grew in the, in the position, and again, you know, I worked seven days a week doing radio, sports updates, all of this stuff, you know, local Long Island cable TV before. And then I went to Seattle to get my first real sports job at Cairo TV, which is a CBS affiliate at that time. Um, but to that point about the voice and that has to be genuine. I've always said this, you know, that you cannot, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, you cannot just use sports as a stepping stone. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can, it's not like, Hey, I'll get on TV, you know, and great. <laughs> then I can go work for, you know, access Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just not that fans can pick it out. So I'm a fan first. I'm a fan first. And I've always said that because it's true. And because I'm a fan first, that, that real, um, you know, the real me comes out in the voice and my expressions and my tone and nothing's fake about it because I am just like the viewer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I've had that connection. I didn't have to have a catchphrase. <laughs> I didn't have to have any of that. I was just being myself because that's, that's what a fan is. <laughs> Someone who's high and low <laughs> and, you know, ha you know, just really lets it all out there. And I think that's how I connected, you know, to fans like that. 
is there a catchphrase that you feel you should have had? Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, you know, looking I mean, back on it. <laughs> well, the classic story that I say in my book, Conehead, uh, which you probably can get for three bucks on Amazon right now. <laughs> but, um, Go buy it. Good plug. Uh, yeah, really, listen, I, uh, you know, whatever. Um, so, uh, but the thing is, uh, you know, I've had like people, you know, I, I threw out things out there, soft, they stuck, like for the love of elevation and Pilates pays <laughs> off and all these kind of things, you know, and stuff like that. But then I, then um, there was a great story. A friend of mine who lives in North Carolina and she still does back in the day, I should really give her a, a call. But, um, <laughs> You know, it was really back in the, I'd say in the late 90s. And she told me about her softball team. And I wrote this about in the book, in the chapter about catchphrases. And um, her softball team was called Master Batters. <laughs> and so I thought, would it be a great idea when someone steps into the batter's box and hit a home run? So back then, again, I'm talking late 90s. So I was like, okay, I, you would say the player's name. And right after it, you would say, master batter so i would say mike you know you see the highlight mike piazza master batter right so i was doing that for a couple of shows and then my boss called me into his office and says uh you know that new catchphrase you've been using you need to lose it no more and i'm like okay i thought it would be funny can't do it no and he with a smirk he, you know he's like you can't do it he so wanted to tell you yes but he was like i can't <laughs> exactly tell you yes, very right? clever but no you know yeah. so that's funny but you know i figured when in doubt be yourself and if something comes to mind you know just say what's on your mind and that's mm -hmm. what i tried to do over a hot, the highlights and get it in and out and you know kind of work with a cop you know my co-anchor or if you, if he didn't want to work with me and have fun, then I would just do my own thing, you know, in my own world, you know. And by the way, we know ladies, that happens too, you know. It does. They're, you know, they just like, oh, no, I can't go in there, you know. Well, it's your fault because you, you look bad. Yeah. You, know, you look you're bad. Missing out. Because you you're having, having fun. fun. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so that's another thing. Just don't let anyone ever bother you or let that. And I went through that too. I mean, I'm not going to mention names, but there were some people. Um, at certain times in my run at ESPN back in the day that made me feel uncomfortable, like I didn't belong. And mm -hmm. I felt like I was doing solo shows, even though mm -hmm. I was with a co-anchor. Uh, very rare, but it did happen uh, for a period of time. And it's just whatever. And, and it, it, again, getting back to having that thick skin, it took a lot. I mean, because you expect it from maybe early on and the, the viewer, you know, who doesn't understand, right? But you didn't think you'd get it from a, from a colleague. And then until I wrapped my head around it, I realized, I can't control that. And they may not even know or realize what they're doing, you know? Yeah. And that's what yeah. you always have to uh, approach. And I tell this to my kids all the time. Sometimes you cannot, you can never ever expect someone to act how you would in that situation because you'll always be disappointed. Well, so that kind of is a great segue to one of our other fan questions. B okay. Hens says, I miss her Sports Center episodes, one of my favorites. Curious, who was your favorite anchor to work with? Ah, oh, one of those popular questions I am always asked. I can never <laughs> answer with one name. I mean, I can never, you know, yeah. um, but, you know, there are just so many uh, uh, great ones. Of course, the late Stuart Scott, uh, obviously, is right up there. And, uh, you know, uh, Rich Eisen, I had so much fun with, and he's the face of the NFL Network for decades now. Uh, all, a lot of early people have come and gone. Guy by the name of Steve Berthume, who does play by play for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He was with us for a while. It's so much fun working with him. A lot of laughs, uh, type of thing, like just fun. Um, yeah. Of course, Kenny Mayne, who just left the company, <laughs> he made me crack up just by looking at his face, looking at me. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just funny, you know? Uh, so, you know, you just can't pinpoint one, but the, the key to, uh, to having a successful sports center show is having that camaraderie you know, with your co-anchor and just having fun with that person. And I think it makes both of us, whoever's sitting in those chairs, look better. But there's just too many to name. Oh, I'm sure. Well, that's why I have Alexis. I couldn't do this by myself. I need somebody <laughs> to bounce it off. But... It's always good to bounce it off, you know? Yeah. It's good, yeah. Um, one of our next questions we've got here from James McCourtney. Uh, he wants to know, who is Linda's favorite hockey player of all time that never played for the Rangers? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Can I just say something? Fabulous question that I have never been asked. There we go. Oh, we go. <laughs> Good job, James. <laughs> wow. That's a great one. Um, I'm just going to go, you know, I have to say, I don't know. I just went through like my Sidney Crosby phase. Uh -huh. I, I, I just uh, adore him just because every time I've come in contact with him, it's been nothing but a gentleman and nice. Yeah. And um, 
I just love the way he carries himself. I, he's a complete hockey player. I mean, Ranger fans must think I'm nuts because Ranger <laughs> fans really, you know, do a job on Sid. Um, but that's the first one that comes to mind currently, like active. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, and, you know, guys like Connor McDavid, I root for, you know, I, I mean, who wouldn't want him on mm-hmm. your team? And he's just learning to be a leader. Yeah. Um, I love that passion. And, 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 and I know I have to throw in a goalie here. So, you know, there, there are so many that weren't Ranger uh, goalies. But it's really hard. I mean, Braden Holtby, I love. He's always yeah. been great. And, and you know, and, and again, you know, I'm gushing over, you know, Flower, Mark andre Fleury. He's just, <laughs> just a great human, great father, all-time great goaltender. Uh, so there's just a few all that right. aren't Rangers. Yes. Hey, that, yeah, that's true. That's fair. He's stuck on the East. We have to find you. Yeah. We have to get you out to the Midwest. Oh, yeah. Get you out yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, the Midwest. I like Patrick Kane. I know that's not sits oh, well with you guys, That's not going to sit uh, well with no. our fans. Linda. He's just <laughs> devilish. He's like devilish. You know what I mean? He he's is. Like, but I mean, he's just... I, well, that, he's a New Yorker, that, so I guess you have that connection, right? He's yes, Buffalo. It's a yeah. little different. It seems like it's another state, but we love <laughs> Buffalo. Yeah, he's from Buffalo, but he's kind of, you know, he's the kind of guy you just want to hang with, but then, okay, bye, Patrick. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, and final question before we let you go resume your day, otherwise we could do this for hours, I imagine. Yeah, fun, um, fun. Alex Smart wants to know, are you going to be broadcasting the NHL when it comes back to ESPN? He also wants to note, thanks for being my favorite sports broadcaster. Please tell my fave, Kenny Mayne, I say hi. So. <laughs> yes, Kenny's the greatest, as I told you, and nothing but bigger and better things moving on with him. Yeah. But, um, you know, I don't know what my role is yet. Uh, okay. They're still trying to figure that out. Again, sadly, the people that have been carrying the torch <laughs> and in place holding the bookmark there, you know, uh, the last to figure out with the company, but that's okay. Yeah. We're excited, all of us, you know, the people that have been here through it all, not having hockey, we're very mm-hmm. excited. And we're very excited about the new additions and anxious to get going. Uh, I know I'll have some role and uh, I expect it to be, uh, I'm going to push for it to be um, some, you know, a big role, but we'll see uh, again. You have to deal with things not in your control. Mm -hmm. And that's a big key is success is finding the positive in things that, you know, on paper look negative. And if you do that, you, you know, you'll live a happy life. And that's what I try to do. Well, let us know if we need to sign a petition where we need to send any letters to so we (laughs) can make sure that we have our girl Linda. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jess. Hashtags <laughs> help <sweet>. Linda. <laughs> exactly. Ha- that's a good hashtag. I think we can do that. For- Maybe not help Linda. People might be like, what's wrong with her? Yeah, like, what's wrong okay? with her? That's a good like, point. Like- yeah. <laughs> thanks. All right. I'm going to leave it up to you, a brilliant women, to think yes. of a good hashtag. All right. that's- Hopefully, we won't need it, yeah. but uh, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, before we let you go, let people know where they can listen to you, where they can find you right now, and uh, what else you've been up to. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, so daily on In the Crease on ESPN Plus, the hockey highlight show, till the season ends, until we crown a Stanley Cup champ. And of course, that will go again. Bigger role, bigger show um, starting when we have hockey again in October. Also uh, on Sports Center, randomly, as a matter of fact, I don't know, you know, it's once a week. I'm usually on from LA, the late, late show, you know, 10 Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. And then, uh, on Sirius XM, Mad Dog Sports Radio, you can hear me uh, randomly. I fill in a lot. And also I fill in on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. So take your chance. Turn it on. Oh, Linda's there. Oh, Linda's not there. Okay, I'll leave it on. Whatever. But, uh, that's yeah, turn it off doing. if you're not, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you know, we have to be a team player. Uh, yeah, so other than that, I'm walking my dog Babs. Really, that's really my life. And, you know, looking out at the ocean, which is great. Being based in uh, in LA now is just, uh, it's a beautiful world for this uh, New York girl. I'm soaking it up, you know, until of course I head back to the East, whenever that is. Yeah, well, wonderful. Well, Linda, thank you again so, so much. We really appreciate you taking the time. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, this is producer Fred. I just wanted to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review, you name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app. Thanks again to Linda Cohen. Again, my idol, my hero, <laughs> the woman that did it all. Not to just bow down, but let's quick one more bow Real down. Real quick. She, because you know, I think what's so amazing about her, and I know we mentioned this in the interview, she wasn't just like this amazing female sportscaster. She's mm-hmm. just an amazing sportscaster. She's I mean, no G. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's just 
unreal. And she just went out there and did it. You know, it was kind of, it's really cool. So thank you so much to her for taking the time um, to mentor us and, and be uh, an inspiration, if you will. Um, and just be awesome. I love yeah. it. Yeah, we love that. And I think it's cool because like everybody knows who she is, right? Like you say yeah. her name and everyone's like, oh yeah, Linda Cohen. Like I, I love seeing that and hearing that and she's a bit of a trailblazer. So it's, it's awesome that we got to have her on the podcast and uh, get a chance to chat with her about uh, her experience in this field. Exactly. I love everyone. The nice gets. Nice yes. Gets. Like, yeah, you're right. That's right. Linda Cohen, no big deal. <laughs> more where that oh, came from. <laughs> more follow Bar Down Beauties for more. Uh, but that's going to do it for this week's episode. Again, thank you to Lyndon, Lin- Linda, Lyndon, <laughs> Linda. Thank you to Linda for taking the time. Uh, shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network. Shout out to sodastick.com. Don't forget to uh, be sure to use Bar Down Beauties for free shipping on all purchases, including some sick new hats that are on their mm-hmm. way out along with some other summer gear. Be sure to stay tuned to their social media channels and ours for that apparel to be coming out. Um, also, shout out to Better Edge, B-E-T-T-O-R Edge.com. Free 10 bucks when you use code Buttes at sign up. Always good, fun, legal betting, <laughs> sports betting, if you will. Um, some good stuff there. Jim Beam, raise your glasses. It's summertime, baby. Get mm-hmm. a little drink, get a little Jim Beam, listen to some country out by the fire. <laughs> it's, a, it's a perfect night, I think, right? One, once this child comes, this child is coming yeah. in two weeks, guys. And then says Jim the woman really who is off. literally two weeks away from giving birth, but yeah. we, we will have a celebratory Jim Beam around the campfire once you pop that baby out, Jesse. I like it. That, let's do it. <laughs> I'm all in on that. And then also shout out to Tony Hoagland, uh, State Farm Insurance at Champlin. Thank you for all the support. And thank you to all of you guys. You guys rock. Um, to our Russian fans, we will try to get more Kirill Kaprizov mentions and storylines for you because I know we've disappointed you the past few weeks yeah, with we're trying what's going on. Yeah, he looks like he's having a great time back at home. So yeah. congratulations for that. Um, and congratulations to Kevin Fiala, who was recently engaged. Yay. So, uh, yay. Good for Tis you. Tis the season of NHLers getting engaged. Yes, Mary. they all have the same anniversaries. I think Jason Sucker yeah. told me that one time. We all have the same anniversaries because there's only like four weekends we can get married <laughs> in the off season. So love to see it hopefully you're enjoying your off season again don't forget to subscribe rate listen all of that good stuff help us grow lots of good off season content coming your way this year um so as always we appreciate you have a great rest of your day